want to thank everyone for uh, joining us at hour number two of the program today. We're talking firearms, uh, everything really firearms, from training to legislation to various models and uh, making sure everybody is up to speed here on microphones. So we want to make sure that people tune in. They don't tune in to hear me on this topic. They tune in to hear these two guys, uh, Todd Eccles from Patriot Defense and, of course, Forrest Anderson from Washington Street Pond. And they were just talking uh, off air about how We've had an uptick in interest in this show and the conversations, and you hear about it a lot more often outside this building. I, I'm, and I guess you're hearing about it probably to the point where sometimes you wonder, gee, how am I going to get all my work done today? Yeah, we have a lot of foot traffic coming to the store, uh, a lot of phone calls, a lot of, uh, we've sold a lot of guns, a lot of people taking Todd's class, yeah. saying like, I'm taking Todd's class, I need a gun. The other day, by the way, I drove past the store. It was busy, and I noticed the guy behind me pulled into the parking lot. But uh, Forrest was outside, and he had his head under the hood of a white pickup truck. Uh, so I don't know what you were up to, but you were doing some repairs of some sort. Installing some new headlights. <laughs> <laughs> and, Todd, you're getting the same reaction. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah. Um, that only happens when you're just ready to go on it, the air. It does. Actually, it happens as soon as I walk in the front door to the station here. But, no, uh, probably over over half the people that have signed up for my last class or my next class have they've all stated. I mean, I hear you on the radio, so I thought I'd sign me and my wife up, and it's fantastic. But yeah, my phone's been ringing off the hook, and I think uh, talking to Forrest, I think it's just a combination. Everyone got new guns for Christmas. Now they want to they want to take a class, or, and and uh, I don't. Know, it feels good. It feels good to it makes me feel really popular. Speaking of firearms, got a You're story a cool here. Kid now, I'm a I'm a cool <laughs> kid. It does show. It, in Idaho, you talk about this subject. Everybody understands, obviously. Uh, but the Blaze had this headline, New York City woman shoots ex-boyfriend after he kicks open her door, and she's taken into custody. Here's why. Uh, she did not kill him. He's going to survive. But he was kicking down her door, threatening her. And so she you know, just said, all right, I'm going to defend myself. But page two gives the answer. She recently moved from North Carolina, where her 40 cal handgun was legal. Uh, she did not have a New York gun permit. She was taken into custody, and charges are now pending. First of all, she's using a forty caliber. <clears throat> but uh, <laughs> yeah, we, I know how you, you feel wanna, about that. Do you want to start the show off like that, Bill? <laughs> <laughs> she stopped the threat. That's she, all that's important. She did. She may go to jail. On the other hand, she saved potentially her, her own life by doing it. Yeah, she's alive, and and that's what's most important i mean obviously you want to comply with the gun laws and maybe she wasn't aware of the restrictions that come in some of these other states so if you're going to go on vacation or if you're going to go visit aunt jen in california before you take your gun you better find out what the laws are some years ago in, in washington where you're traveling in washington we had something like this come up where as i recall what happened was a, a guy saw a neighborhood kid three years old being mauled by a pit bull grabbed his pistol, ran outside, and he shot the pit bull dead, saved the life most likely of the little boy, uh, you know, who still had to deal with a lot of uh, I mean, medical issues. So the guy who, who shot the dog got arrested. And they said, well, you violated uh, Washington's ban on firing uh, in, the, uh, in the city. Uh, you know, and, and yet the public outcry was so great that somebody finally in government realized, maybe because he saved this little boy's life, we should let him go. And I wonder, will feminists come forward and say, you know, this woman defended herself? Do you th think that might happen? Yeah. I think I think anyone with their head on yeah. their shoulders should stand up and, and write a letter and make a phone call. Yeah. You know, this woman defended herself. She moved from another state. She wasn't un from she wasn't familiar with the laws, but she's alive today against an abusive um, person, and you know. Okay, so let's get her a gun registered. Let's get her in line with the law, and let's let's do the right thing. But anyone should do that. Uh, Say what's that? What's that? Um, that saying is uh, God made man, and Sam Colt made them equal, or something like that. I mean, is that I probably butchered that, but it's true though. I mean, she was she was able to 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 defend herself and save her life, and and she broke a stupid a stupid little law. I mean, this was the guy was coming into her apartment, right? So it's not like she was even out on the street carrying the, the carrying the firearm. I didn't read the article, but that's what it sounds like. So she was in her home. She defended herself. She wasn't a felon. She was right. legally allowed to own a firearm. Yep. We won't. So she was in compliance with federal law. Right. 
So this is some sort of city statute that she wasn't in so, compliance with. So according to New York or that city statute or whatever, she should just roll over and play but it, dead it, it and take it? To the point, maybe she should have, if you go somewhere, we've always talked about how you should research what the law says there. You should. You, I mean, you, you definitely should. You should be educated on, on where you're going to travel and, and what the laws are, you know, pertaining to your handgun or the concealed carry of a handgun or, or mag round, you know, mag, uh, mag size. I mean, you should be aware of that. She did not, but there's also another, um, uh, years ago, is it that, Shin, Shin, is it Shanine Allen? Is that, what was it, Shanine Allen? That gal that uh, she just carried across the bridge and she got pulled over. Right. She yeah. was a, a nurse and uh, yeah. with her kids. Yeah, she lived in a kind of a bad na- neighborhood, so she had, had had a handgun. It was permitted in one state. She ended up crossing the bridge and she ended up getting pulled over by a law enforcement officer. And uh, she didn't even realize that she was in the wrong and uh, she went ahead and said, hey, I have a handgun with me. They scooped her up and put her in jail. Because yep. she wasn't supposed to have a handgun once you crossed that bridge. We have a caller with us. Caller, you're up next. You're on the air on Top Story. Go ahead. Good morning, Bill. I believe that saying is uh, barbed wire tamed the West, but Colt made old man equal. Oh, nice. Something like that. Yeah, that's, a, <laughs> that's even better. Anything else? <laughs> you have a good day. Enjoy the show. Hey, thank you. Thank you. A telephone number to reach the program. 208-736-0300, 208-736-0300. Public opinion will often come to the rescue of these people, but it doesn't seem to change the laws in these states. Uh, but I guess if public opinion can constantly be applied, you almost nullify the law. Well, yeah, I mean, you, you would hope so. And eventually someone's going to say, hey, look, this, this keeps happening, and then public opinion says this, maybe we need to look at this law again, we need to rethink it, we need to reword it, we need to... You strike it down. We need to do something, but uh, unfortunately, there's going to be a bunch of people along the way that may, you know, even if they let her, she's still she's still in jail. She still maybe lost her job. It's still going to cost her money. She's going to have to go through this fight. Um, and if if public opinion let you know someone says, hey, well, you ought to just let let her be because she saved her life. It is what it is. But there's going to be have to be cases, guinea pigs, I guess, along the way. Just like I've I've heard people say, well, when I when I lived in Kansas. Um, you were able to carry pretty much, I would say, pretty much anywhere unless it was signed. And um, a lot of people will go to, the, like, the schools, the grade schools and stuff. They they would say, well, there's no sign, so I can legally carry there. And they're like, well, you know, there's that federal blanket law. And everyone was like, well, go ahead and carry there if you want. Go ahead and, and be that guy that has to, you know, saves a bunch of lives or something. But you're going to get you're going to get drug in, drug through a federal, federal case. You're going to be made an example of. So you just got to figure out what you're wanting to do and what you're you know, what you're willing to do. This might w- open up a can of worms today, but I had a guy in my shop today, or not today, uh, yesterday, who said, hey, I'm going to buy a suppressor. Uh, it's stamped made in Idaho, so I can just own it legally. Um, what, you know, and then was asking me how to attach it to his gun. I'm like, that is absolutely against federal law. Idaho did pass a statute that said, if it's made in Idaho, it's going to be legal. That will absolutely not hold up in court if you get arrested. So if you have a, so if someone has convinced you that you have a suppressor that's because it's made in Idaho, it's legal to own without a tax stamp, that is absolutely incorrect. There's a reason why you don't see them on the store shelves and on the store counters because it's illegal as heck. So if you've got one, you're rolling the dice. If you get pulled over, you get arrested, they find it in your house, now you're up against federal charges. And 10 years and $250,000 in fines isn't worth the $200 tax stamp, in my opinion. Does anyone want to point out that if she'd actually uh, been armed with a 9 millimeter, the woman in New York, that she might have gotten better placement? Okay, yeah, I'll <laughs> say that. She might have gotten better placement. She did stop the threat, but better placement... Yeah, maybe. She she obviously needed to take a few more classes, and she would have known the difference between 9 and 40, and that she would have been better off with a 9. She didn't take a Patriot defense class, that's for sure. She could have listened to Joe Biden and just uh, shot through the door with a shotgun. Wasn't that his advice? <laughs> yes, yep, yep. Yeah. Of course, for the 45, uh, she would have eliminated the threat altogether. Forever. Well, maybe. They think those 45 rounds are handcrafted by God himself. <laughs> <laughs> hey, a couple of other things we want to talk about, too, this morning as well. Uh, coming up on 916, and you're listening to Top Story on News Radio 1310, KLIX, and News Radio 1310.com. It's 28. I have this as well uh, from Washington Examiner. 2017 gun sales, second best ever, 25 million more, and then they're in quotes, socially acceptable. 
uh, the long predicted crash of the gun market following President Trump's election uh, never came about. Uh, 2016, of course, was the best year ever because people weren't sure what was going to happen. Uh, but it, uh, it's amazing that people are still arming themselves, according to the mainstream media, that no one expected this to happen. Well, and I think there's a lot to do with it. I mean, as far as there's, there's a lot of new gun owners, I believe, and prices this last year were phenomenal on that, ammo, phenomenal on guns. I mean, Forrest can vouch for that. Yeah, that's that's really what drove sales this year was the suppliers. Like five days before the election, all the AR-15s I could buy either went up in price or disappeared completely off the market, not because they were sold, because the distributors, the middlemen, pulled that stock back. And they anticipated the election going the other way. Well, when it didn't, now all of a sudden they've got these huge orders of guns that they made, and they had to dump them. And they were, like I said, selling AR-15s for 450 bucks, brand new. Um, we had some there for a while for $400. So there were some great buys out there. There still are. In fact, we've got some 9mm coming in right now, some really small concealed carry 9mm. They're going to be $180, $180 brand new. So, and, and that is, I think the smaller ones make great purse guns, don't they? Absolutely. Yep. Yep. I, or just to throw in your back pocket of your pants or truck gun. You know, I always tell people get a good holster, but these ones are nice because they're small enough and light enough. I mean, you get a decent holster, you'll never know you're carrying it. Won't be uncomfortable. Wanted to point out since people uh, wonder how they could actually take advantage of some of these uh, great deals uh, that Forrest uh, now owns uh, outright Washington Street Pawn. For people who'd like to actually find the store, and uh, what else do you have going on over there? We got a ton of stuff. We just pulled out a Honda 3000 generator. We've got smart watches. We're loaning money. Like, that's the thing. Right now, a lot of people are having money is tight. So if you want to borrow money, bring in anything. We'll loan you money on it. You know, guns, gold, silver, electronics. Um, we're at 321 Washington Street. We're three blocks south of Addison on Washington. Phone number is 208-735-0012. Or you can find us on, under Facebook uh, under Washington Street Pond. And Todd, for people, uh, you've got a course coming up soon, obviously. Yeah, I've actually got two of them. Um, I've got one coming up this Saturday on January 13th. And I've got a few spots left. I'm about re actually ready just to shut that one down because it, it got full and it got full quick. So I opened up another one on uh, February 3rd. Um, so uh, call me. I can uh, maybe squeeze you in the January one, but I can get you in the February one for sure. Um, you can call me, text me, area code 620-794-6223. That's area code 620-794-6223. You can find me on Facebook under Patriot Defense. Go ahead and like the page, and I'll keep you updated of everything going on. Should point out too as well that there's a classroom portion in the morning, and then there's a lunch break, and uh, you will actually though the uh, the actual uh, training will go on or lessons I'll call it will go on indoors because it is obviously colder. Yeah, it's pre it's year. it's pretty ugly out there right now. So yeah, we will do the uh, we'll use the indoor range over in Buell, and that's the way we'll finish up today. In all of the uh, gun grabbing states, it's actually below zero this morning. We should point that out. Maybe there's a message in there somewhere. It's 20 minutes after nine o'clock. We're at 30. Top story on News Radio 1310 KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. And we have more of your comments and questions too on the way this morning when it comes to firearms. Uh, telephone number, remember after the break, 208 736 0300. 22 minutes after 9 o'clock. And uh, joining us in the studio, we have Forrest Anderson from Washington Street Pond, Todd Eccles from Patriot Defense, Bill Colley with you as well on Top Story on News Radio 1310 KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. Comment or question about uh, anything firearms uh, this hour, a telephone number 208-736-0300. I just want to make a mention, since I brought this up yesterday as well, uh, we have a, a, a new sponsor on this program, Even Green. Or it's actually known, though, by the acronym of EGT Solar. And uh, if you didn't know it, the solar panels, uh, the price of them are dropping dramatically. And we're not talking about these giant fields of them that you may see off the highway in various places. But for your home or business, these people can take care of that for you. And I, I, I make an analogy here. Uh, when I was a kid, my dad built a new home when the price of oil was really, really high in the late 1970s. And he said, I'm going to heat the home with electricity. So he didn't put in any natural gas or any way to do it with a home heating oil. But when I raised the question, what do you do when the price of electricity itself goes up? These things fluctuate. He said, well, we're also going to put in a wood stove and a wood furnace. So there's alternatives. Same thing with solar panels. Is What they do is they give you an alternative. They may not necessarily always be the 
most efficient on a cloudy day, but when you remember southern Idaho, clouds are somewhat rare most of the year around here. So if you have an interest in doing this, it's a great option. The telephone number is 208-293-9191. That's 208-293-91 or 9191. Let me get that out all together. Uh, but these folks will come out and uh, they could help you uh, find a backup source of power. And the price is coming way down too as far as generation. So it could save you some money, especially in the long run. I wanted to point out uh, the two folks who are here with us in studio today. Uh, we're talking uh, firearms and uh, had a little discussion in the last hour, as I mentioned, with a state legislator who was behind uh, some of the concealed carry efforts in the state of Idaho. Uh, that is, uh, we, we, we've changed some laws in the last few years. Somebody made a comment to me off air last week, and it was along the lines of uh, the, uh, the, the gun lobby in Idaho has to have a bill every year, and they have to have a bill passed every year so they can claim they're getting something done so that they uh, can justify their existence. Fair criticism, or are we going a little too far there? Um, I agree with that. I agree <laughs> with that. I think uh, shows past that we have, we've gone down that road a little bit, and I think that a lot of times I think there's bigger and better um, issues for them to tackle, um, in my, in my personal opinion. And I think sometimes they grab what I'm going to call low-hanging fruit just so they can remain relevant until they work their way up to a big one. I guess that's what people do. Um, some of the bills they try to pass, I maybe I just don't fully understand them, but I don't always back them 100%, um, including the, uh, the Castle Doctrine one. I guess I need someone to maybe sit down with me and go over that because I don't, I don't see how that's a lot or very much different than what we actually have now versus where you can, if you can legally be wherever you are at that time, you can defend yourself or defend others. I don't know. I need to, someone needs to sit down and point out that big differences between that and this castle doctor and bill that they're trying to wanting to push through. I, Cause I, I guess I just don't see it. I there again, I think all they're doing is, is putting legislation to something that already exists. Yes. It's kind of like an AR-15. People come in and ask about accessories and parts all the time. They make a ton of parts for problems that don't exist. Yeah. That just to get people to buy them. There's an old saying that fishing lures have caught way more fishermen than have ever caught fish. Because you go in a fishing store, here's all these cool-looking lures. Now, they'll, never, they'll never catch a fish, but a lot of fishermen buy them because they look really cool. Uh, so that could be, you know, the same analogy could be used for this. You know, they're basically wanting a law to... Do something that's already done. Yeah, exactly. But then they can say they did it. Yeah, well, and it not last year, but the year before, I think, or not. Yeah, the year before they they when they didn't really pass much of anything. But when that you know this is before constitutional carry went into effect. But they they went through and reworded it, so just to make it more clear that you could carry without a permit in the county. You know, in the in the, in the county, but when you were in cities, you had to have a concealed carry permit that was already there and it wasn't that hard to figure out, but they jumped up and down and yay, look what we did for the year. And I'm like, that was already there. That was just a waste of time, a waste of money, a waste of effort in my mind, in my mind, that's probably going to bite me. But you know, when they, when they, uh, there's a way to market this and I think it's done well and they're able to bring a lot of people out who can stand on the steps of the Capitol building and uh, show up at a rally. Now I don't have a lot of time to go to rallies, but if people feel strongly enough about it, they do. And and, but but I guess the point is, someday we may see it come, where you have everything you want. Then what happens? Uh, <laughs> well, I mean, there there's lots of where where that gun lobby should be putting their money. In my opinion, is is in education, education for children about firearms. You know, I would love to see a, like a traveling, like they have the traveling like dentist that goes around all the schools. I would love to see a traveling um, gun education truck that goes around that can educate kids on guns, gun safety, you know, let them understand the dangers of firearms. Because every time I read in the paper about someone getting shot accidentally, you know, we just had a shooting in Wendell uh, where a brother and a sister mm -hmm. I mean, it's just a horrible thing. And we need to educate these kids. If you're going to have guns in your home, you need to educate them. But unfortunately, there's a lot of people that drop the ball. So 
I would love to see the gun lobby so get behind something like that and, and get the schools open to something like that. Because reality is you may not like guns, but they are in our communities. They're in our kids' friends' homes. And we need to educate those children on the dangers and, and on how to be safe around them. I, I agree with I agree with Forrest. And going back to, you know, we have these rallies and they have these rallies and stuff every year. And I think they're just trying to remain popular, kind of keep people maybe interested from year to year till they can get a big topic. But the education thing would be fantastic. My dad uh, told me that when he was a kid, I mean, they had a gun safety class at school and they actually had a 22 rifle range in the basement. I mean, you don't, you don't find that anymore. You don't see that anymore. Um, kind of something that kind of pertains to this a little bit, kind of caught me off guard. I have a four-year-old at home. He's my youngest, my youngest boy is four years old. And he started going to a new daycare. He's like, I think it's like second or third day there. And uh, my wife said that she went to pick him up and the daycare um, teacher or the whatever said, uh, yeah, you're, he started to talk about guns and I had to just kind of put the kibosh on it. And I was like, a daycare? He goes, yep, we had to put the kibosh on it. She didn't tell him that guns were bad, but she just changed the subject. That's how afraid and uneducated people are. We have a short break coming up. Got to mention, uh, we're talking firearms until 10 o'clock this morning. It's 28 right now on News Radio 1310. KLIX and NewsRadio1310.com. Todd Eccles, Forrest Anderson, and Bill Colley in studio. Hey, quick note. We're, we're having an off-air discussion just about federal law versus state law. And, and again, we had a call about this from a caller two weeks in a row at one point, I think, on this show. Uh, we're at 934 and joining us in studio, Forrest Anderson from Washington Street Pond, Todd Eccles from Patriot Defense, Bill Colley as well. Telephone number 208-736-0300. On News Radio 1310, KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. Uh, that whole uh, discussion we had earlier about uh, somebody saying that, uh, you know, the suppressor, we have an Idaho law that allows it, but federal law will supersede it, reminds me a little bit of California selling recreational marijuana. And the federal government comes along and says, you can't do that. And then California says, well, we have a law. Well, federal drug law is going to supersede. Oregon, California, Nevada, and those places. There's still routinely uh, federal raids in California busting these pot farms. Now, here's the thing: with the current administration, you know, you might they might not come looking. But let's say you buy that, and they know you have it, and then a different administration comes into power, they're going to come flex their muscle against policies that they don't agree with. So they're going to come get that. And the other thing you always ask yourself is, if you're buying a regulated device like a firearm or a gun, and a guy wants to meet you in a dark alley, won't give you a seat, there's no name stamped on or anything like that, that should be your first answer. If they're so confident that this is legal, let's see a store open up yep. selling them. Exactly. Uh, another thing to mention, on fa- uh, there's been a lot of people selling guns privately, which is great. It's fine. But when you do that, make sure you get a copy of the person you're selling it to driver's license. There was just a guy who sold some guns. First of all, he got counterfeit money. He didn't realize because he met a guy in a dark parking lot. Couldn't see the money very good. Didn't get a receipt. Didn't get the ID. Didn't even get the license plate number off the guy's car. So he based that guy, who's obviously a criminal because he has counterfeit money, got some pretty powerful firearms. This guy got nothing. When you sell a gun, make sure you get a receipt because you don't want to sell a gun to a felon or a criminal. And if they're if they won't give you a copy of their driver's license, if they won't sign a bill of sale, then they're probably a criminal because they got something to hide. I know people that won't uh, that won't sell guns, and it's not required by Idaho law, but they won't sell anyone a firearm unless they can actually um, provide them with a concealed carry permit because that's that states to them they've gone through a background check at one time and the state said you're good to go that type of thing they'll take that uh get a copy of it and get a bill of sell i would never as well though tell someone to come to my house if i was selling a firearm because we had a fellow who was selling a car a couple of uh, about a year ago here in twin falls and some people came by and they shot him at his at his own home so uh, you know maybe not in a dark parking lot but maybe if you're going to be doing this check out who this person is if you can a friend of mine once said when I was trying to rent my house back east, he said, just start looking at Facebook and Twitter and LinkedIn. You'll, you'll find these people. 
and you can make some determinations about them uh, if they're real or not or what they're up to. Well, Forrest will run a background check, too, for a small fee if you want to be extra safe, and I'm sure they can come right down to the store and do the transaction right there. For, I... for $25, you can come down to the shop and do the transaction there, and what we will do is we will buy your gun, and we will sell it to the other individual for you with you both standing there, and we will make and they we will run them through a background check. That way, you know your gun is going to someone who can legally own the firearm, and that's just that's service we provide. Also, for our female listeners out there, I know a lot of them. There's a lot of single ladies out there who sell things like their television or jewelry or things like that. And I tell everyone, if you you know don't feel safe doing something like that, first of all, we do consignment. You can bring it down, I'll consign it for you. I'll sell it for you. Second of all. If you say have someone that wants to buy it, you come meet them in my store. I'll let you do the transaction right there just so you're in a safe place because I guarantee you we got more guns than they do. So you'll be safe. We'll let you do the transaction there, and we can kind of keep an eye on you and make sure that, that everything goes like it's supposed to. So I really took a risk this week, or this actually this week, when I was uh, selling some of my uh, car sticker, Patriot Defense uh, car stickers, like in the Walmart parking lot. Dude, were you that guy walking around? I was, like, yeah. Like, Trench coat, yeah. fedora, wow. hold down low. I see that. <laughs> Here's another thing. Uh, don't ever buy gold from selling you gold in the Walmart parking lot. There's a lot of guys that do this. If you don't have a really good magnet, I have people come in probably twice a week. They're like, hey, I bought this gold super cheap off this guy, this gold chain. He needed money, in the, and he, you know, he was in the parking lot of the store, and I test it, and it's always fake. So... Uh, don't buy precious metals from some guy in a parking if lot. If you want to trade your gold for a Patriot Defense bumper sticker, we're going to go down to Washington Street Pond first. Yeah. I, was going to I will it. test your gold, and I'll test the bumper sticker, there too. You go. <laughs> that spray paint, by the way, also uh, comes off while you're examining it. You might have a hint that it's not really gold. Yep. We have a short break coming up. Uh, we've got about uh, 15, 20 more minutes left on our Top Story. And, of course, joining us in the studio from Patriot Defense, Todd Eccles. From over at Washington Street Pond, Forrest Anderson, and Bill Colley as well on News Radio 1310 KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. We're at 28. Joining us in the studio, of course, uh, Forrest Anderson from Washington Street Pond, Todd Eccles from Patriot Defense, Bill Colley with you as well on Top Story on News Radio 1310 KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. Uh, we're at 29 right now. Quickly, we were talking during the break. Uh, there was a story on the AP wire last week, fellow in Nevada. Uh, shot and killed another man because the guy jumped into his car, tried to carjack it, and uh, and and the, there will be no charges against the man defending himself. But I, I raised the question because in some states, you know, when I lived in Delaware, they used to say, well, if someone breaks into your house, as long as you can still run out the back door, uh, you can't, you know, you can't defend yourself. So you run away was your first option of self-defense. Uh, and it raises the question, if someone jumps into your car, uh, how do we interpret that? Uh, can you run away, or uh, is he uh, is he justified in shooting and killing the other man who's trying to rip him off, basically steal his car? You know, it's very going to be very situation uh, dependent, and depends on the state you're going to be in. A lot of states, um, even though they say maybe you have to try to get away, um, a lot of states will consider your car, your vehicle, if you're in it, and you're maybe someone jumps in it trying to hijack you. They, they will rule that as that is your house. That is the space that you are occupying right then and there. And a lot of people, let's say, you know, I, I have five kids. More often than not, I've got my four-year-old strapped into the car seat in the back seat. Someone jumps in my vehicle. I'm in one of these states that says I have to run away. I'm, I'm not going to. I'm going to. I'm, there's no way I'm going to. I can't even get my kid buckled in that car seat in a timely fashion, let alone get him out of it. So my kid's in there. Someone jumps in. I'm going to feel threatened. Uh, my kid's going to feel threatened. I'm going to do what I have to do to uh, to protect myself and my family. And it's and it's knowing the situation because I can remember back when there was the cruise on Blue Lakes when I was in high school. Oh yeah. One of my favorite techniques was pull up a light, call car full of girls. I would jump out of the car I was in, go and just jump in the car with them and ride up and down a couple times. I ended up with a girlfriend out of the deal, but that was a pretty <laughs> slick thing nowadays. <laughs> Be completely different would be received completely differently than it was then, but uh, you kind of got to interpret the intentions of the. You, you'd hate to uh, someone dive in your car and you turn around and 
shoot them without identifying the target. Turns out your neighbor just jumping in to say hi or do something like that. But uh, right. But you know, nowadays, hopefully, uh, hopefully, and you do want to identify your target. Hopefully, people are smart enough, maybe not to jump <laughs> in somebody's car. <laughs> I mean, you know, that's just that's just not safe. Well, you should, period. and as a driver, you should drive with your doors well, locked. Well, most anyway. most new cars lock as soon as you start right. it up and put right. it in gear. Right. I'm always worried if I've got to scrape the windshield, it's going to lock up on me while I'm outside. Um, but it's not in gear, so I should be fine. And that is, if you're at a stoplight and you know you're in a bad part of town, we don't have too many of those in in southern Idaho. But if you're in a bad part of town and someone approaches you, if your door's locked, you're likely going to be okay. And mm-hmm. that's. You could, because you're going to be able to drive away. That person's left standing. Yeah, there. you're sitting in a, in a, you know, anywhere a two to three to four thousand pound weapon, and people, people don't realize that. I tell everyone as soon as you get in your vehicle, if the doors don't lock behind you automatically, lock the door. You should drive around with the door locked. I mean, there was a, cu- a couple of years ago, I think now there was a story came out of Boise. Um, a, a guy ran up to a lady's vehicle, opened the door, tried to drag her out of her car by her hair. As she was driving, I think she just dropped her kid off at school or something like that. She was she was pulling away and she was at a stoplight. So if she would have had her doors, she was able to retrieve her handgun and he saw it and and he ran away. It, it worked out well for her. But if she would have had her doors locked to begin with, you can stem off that attack at all. You know, you just call call the police and say someone just tried to get in my car. They're running this way down the street. Three years ago, right in right across the street from the pawn shop, there was a Dodge pickup center. A lady with Three kids in the, in her truck. Another pickup came up and pinned her, like basically drove up against her front tire. So and she was against the building in the back. She couldn't back up. She couldn't go forward. And I'm watching through the windows. We were just closing the store. He gets out and starts pulling her car door open. Well, as fast as it takes me to grab my shotgun and head out the door, he has her out of the car by her hair. And is trying to shove her into the passenger side of his truck. Meanwhile, the kids are screaming. I'm running across. When he sees me, he lets her go. Um, and she took off. And this is a prime example of what we've talked about. So we, my employee was calling 911. So I'm approaching him across the street. He's let her go. She's running around. He turns his attention to me. While he's looking at me, she jumps back in her truck, takes the front bumper off his truck, and takes off down the road. Well, I've got him kind of squared away. Well, she's down the road. I can see a police car coming. He approaches me so he can get back in his door. I just let him get in because at that point, the police were right there. Threat is over. She was driving away. I let him get in. He drove 100 feet. Three police cars had him pulled over. They took care of it. I walked across the street, finished lock up, and we closed up that night. But you know, that's a perfect example. She would have her truck door locked. Even though he had her pinned in, she would have been fine. If he tried to break her glass, she could have done what she did, just drive off and take the front bumper off his truck. You know, I drive a really old vehicle, an old, old international scout. We don't have such things as, like, electronic door locks. And I'll actually reach clear over the seat around my kids if I have to and reach over and make sure that door's locked. That's just the way That's just the way I was brought up. I mean, you know, so when I go to work sometimes, I'll do certain accounts. Some accounts I can't get into till a certain time, so I'll sit in a parking lot for 20 minutes and wait for a place to open up. And you got these people that wander around the parking lots, and I've had more than one come up and knock on my door. Maybe they want me to help push start them. They need to jump start, or they're just out panhandling. I don't know. But I sit there with my doors locked, and uh, I'll be busy, you know, doing paperwork, and they'll surprise the heck out of me. And I can only imagine what would happen if the door was unlocked and I reached over and tried to open that door. There'd be big problems at that point we have a caller caller you're up next you're on the air at 948 on top story hey good morning gentlemen it, uh forrest uh pointed out a, a specific point in that new uh, castle doctrine law that uh christy zito talked about uh earlier in the week uh that i was unclear of and and, and i in reading it i'm still i'm along with you guys uh, forrest taking his gun and going across the street in the defense of someone else under state law now, I mean, he could literally, you know, if he had to, if he had to, if he had to discharge that firearm at that guy, you know, stop a threat, he could be arrested. He could have his gun seized. All the other bad things uh, under the law, and I didn't see anything in the New Castle Doctrine that would protect someone. You know, if we're in a Walmart parking lot and I see a guy wailing on his wife with a significant other with a baseball bat to pull my concealed weapon and and engage the threat one way or the other. 
I still don't see anything in the current castle doctrine that would that would protect me as a citizen because I would I, I I have no duty be at, to act. I would be aggressing versus retreating, and I I, I think that's a serious uh, issue that needs to be tweaked in that bill to make me even uh, happy with it. Right now, as far this is as far as I understand, okay, and I'm. I mean, this is what I do, but I'm not saying. I mean, this is this is you know legal jargon law. This is what I have been taught, and I've been taught or taught in my classes with the law enforcement officers teaching my class for the last four or five years. In Idaho, if you can legally be wherever you are, if that's walking down the street, if that's in a park, if that's in a store, if you can legally be wherever you are, you can legally defend your life and the life of others. That's how I understand it, that's what the law enforcement officers have told me. That is the way it is right now. So that's the way I understand it. So Forrest, obviously you didn't get in trouble for that. No. You could go over there and you didn't have to discharge your firearm, but you could legally defend yourself or someone else because you could legally be in that parking lot. Now, if if Forrest was to break into someone's house and someone were to shoot at him, he couldn't legally defend himself then because he couldn't legally be in that person's house. But he could legally be on the street in that parking lot in that park, in that store. But I, I also when, when, you know, somebody at the shop was calling 911, I, I would hope, too, that they would have said, Forrest is outside, he's got a shotgun, uh, he's yeah. not the bad guy. Yeah, and, I, and that's part of the reason why I stood down, is I didn't want to get rolled up on with me with a shotgun sure. pointed at this person because, you know, had they got the call or misinterpreted the call, here's two guys in plain clothes, one of them's got a shotgun, the other one's standing there by his pickup door with the door open, you know, it looks bad for me for just someone if they were just coming from nowhere because the th- the woman being threatened had gotten in her truck and was headed down the road. So that's why I just literally stepped back because I was right in front of his pickup door. I stepped back. He got in. I stepped away, held my shotgun on the ground at my side. The police went right by. I don't even think that they even noticed that, but... um they did come in and talk to me later, and we talked about what happened. But uh, I, we, we talk about that split-second decision. Like, I had two seconds to decide, this guy's coming at me. Do I shoot him, mm-hmm. or do I let him get in his truck and drive away? And I made the right decision, because had I shot him, I can't imagine the the consequences. But the woman was safe. The police were on the scene, you know, and that was the decision I made, and it was the right decision. He's alive today. Um, he went to jail. I'm not sure where he went from that, but hopefully he turned his life around. So that, that points out too, this is something we all need to think about. I mean, if you can legally defend someone, which is, which it says that you can, under my understanding, you gotta, you gotta understand, you gotta think ahead of time going into that, that if the police are rolling up and you're the guy with the gun out, you are going to possibly be looked at as the, as the threat, as the guy with the gun, especially if, uh, your buddy didn't call in, or maybe someone else just called in, and they don't know what they don't know the full picture. They just know there's a guy running after another guy across the street. He's got a shotgun. We don't know what's going on. So you need to understand that. You need to uh, decide if you're willing to put yourself in that potential situation, and you need to know the consequences of it. And you need to have taken a class or or have someone talk to you about what to do if you are in that situation. And law enforcement arrives. You need to put your gun down. You need to do what they say. You need to not be defiant. You need to, you know, make those right choices. That's something that not everybody, everybody thinks about. And to back up a little bit on this uh, Castle Doctrine bill, this new one that they're trying to push through, I think I'm going to research that a little bit because I'm, I'm a little curious myself. In fact, I uh, I know someone who I can probably get a hold of who can maybe help clarify. I want to know the differences because this is, re- to me, my mind, this is really confusing. Yeah, just, and if you ever seen me after a long day of work, I mean, I could have very well looked like a crazy person. Crazy person. <laughs> it's the end of the day. Had a long day. Hey, th- this is a flashback to this is a flashback when you said just a few minutes. You know, police are on the scene. I wanted to say ice, ice, baby. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we wanted to point out too, Forrest is also going to be involved in a big, big project coming up sometime soon. Uh, we've got two. Two classes coming up. It might be two or three because we don't do more than 10 at a time, but we are collaborating with Shaw Shooting, and we're going to do two men's one-day pistol classes. Now, this isn't going to be get your enhanced concealed permit. This is going to be we're going to be shooting on the car range. We're going to be shooting steel. We're going to be shooting moving targets, and you'll get a lot of trigger time. We'll probably go between 
go through between 750 and 1,000 rounds. Um, we're just going to do two 10-man classes. We're still working on the price point, um, but you're going to get a lot of pretty advanced training. You don't have to be an advanced shooter. You just have to be familiar with the firearm, be safe. We're going to start out on paper. We're going to go to the car range. We're going to go to the steel range. We're going to go to the moving target range, moving and shooting. It's going to be a good time. We're also doing a one-day women's class as well. Uh, last year we had uh, 25 women. The year before we had 30. It's a great time, and we're going to split that class into three newbies, people that have maybe taken a couple classes, and then advanced shooters. So we're going to have something for everybody. So anyway, if you're interested in those, stop by the shop, let us know. Like I said, the guys, we're probably only going to take 20 guys, and we're going to do two different classes, 10 guys each class. Uh, the dates will probably be sometime in May. Um, we'll let you know. But if there's some interest, let me know. We'd like to get those fired up. And if you want some ad some advanced training on some on the stuff that the the best of the best on the range where they shoot, then uh, come sign up and we'll it'll be a fun experience. Contact information for Todd Eccles. Yeah, you can get a hold of me or te text me, call me. Area code six two zero seven nine four six two two three. That's area code six two zero seven nine four six two two three. Uh, I've got a class this Saturday. That'll be January 13th. I, I could probably fit a couple more people on that. It's getting pretty full, though. So I went ahead and opened an another one on February 3rd. Um, got any questions? You want to get signed up? Call me or text me. Find me on Facebook under Patriot Defense. And uh, I kind of slacked off for a little while, but uh, my podcasts are back up and going. I actually have a co-host, and you know, I think they actually are sounding pretty good. So uh, you can uh, find that on my Facebook page. Whenever I do one, I go ahead and post it up there. Uh, find it on iTunes under the Patriot Defense Podcast. And again, if for us, for people who'd like to drop in the shop, it's fairly easy to find. Yeah, 321 Washington Street. We're three blocks south of Addison on Washington. Red and white building. Can't miss us. Um, phone number 208-735-0012. Find us on Facebook under Washington Street Pond. Uh, come in. we got a lot of cool stuff coming and going. Um, like I said, I bought the shop last week, so policies are a little different, you know. Uh, we're, we're able to get whatever you need. You can use your cards, whatever works for you. Come on down. We'll we'll make you a great deal. You know, we talked earlier about uh, keeping your doors locked. Uh, short story before we wrap up. When I was a little boy, my dad always drove these big old Chrysler land yachts. And, of course, the, the locks inside, uh, you know, you had to push down and pull up. And they would take us on occasion to the zoo in Buffalo, New York, which, despite the name, they don't actually have any bison there, to my knowledge, on the zoo grounds. But they would take us, we had to go through some bad neighborhoods to get there. This was back in the days when riots were still fairly common. And uh, my parents would get to a certain block and they would say, all right, you know, lock the doors. But they also had to start saying windows up because we were at an intersection one day at a, a, and waiting to go through the intersection. And my brother was three. So this must have been 1967. And he'd heard some bad language around the neighborhood. And he looked out the car window and said, Dad, where did all of these people come from? But he didn't say these. And my dad at that point uh, rolled through a few stop signs uh, to make it down the street and get out of the neighborhood. Well, you got to be careful of two things. What your kids say, and if you're in a bad setting as well, not just doors locked, but windows up. Um, situational awareness. Situational awareness. We've got to wrap up. We'll talk to you guys sometime soon. Absolutely. And, uh, Friday. Uh, Todd Eccles and Forrest Anderson joining us in studio. God willing, if the creek don't rise, I'll be back here on Monday morning between 8 and 10 o'clock. Uh, in fact, it'll be the first full week I've worked since about mid-November coming up next week. The first time I've been here five days, which is it's amazing to go two months like this. Uh, right now, though, Rush Limbaugh coming up following the news at 9 or 10 o'clock from Fox on News Radio 1310 KLIX and NewsRadio1310.com.